sure you've already seen a ton of slap bass tutorials telling you how to do this, how to do that, but let me tell you how I do it. <laughs> So if you're interested in playing slap bass and not just for the hell of it, you wanna be effective when playing slap bass, let's go over a few rules that you would need to know or just a few tips. I'm gonna talk about tone, accuracy, and position. So let's go. So first of all, I get it. If you're beginning to learn how to play slap bass, it will be wonderful and marvelous if you can play what I played in the beginning. But guess what? That takes years and years of practice. So what you have to do is start slow and then build that speed and accuracy up to that point. So we're gonna start off with the basics. So first of all, tone. One of the most important things you need to know about achieving a good slap tone is newer strings. So just to have that bite, that brightness, that pop to a good slap tone, you need those newer, fresher strings to where you hear the fretboard gliding all up and down when you press against the strings. So you want that sound, you want that tone to naturally achieve a good slap tone. You don't even have to do anything to the EQ or to the knobs or anything like that. If you have fresh strings, you can achieve a decent slap tone by itself off of the bat. So when it comes to tone, that's the very first thing. Also, when you're slapping the string with your thumb, hitting the fretboard and the frets, that contact that it makes, that click sound, that's what you want too. So your action can play a good role in that. So you don't want your action to be too high because you won't get that, that slap, that pop, that little click sound when you're slapping. And that's what makes a good slap tone. Uh, all of those things combined. So when you're slapping, just pay attention to that. Usually when I slap, I play closer to the fretboard maybe on top of the fretboard, sometimes back here. It depends on how I'm feeling that day, but it's not necessarily a, a right or wrong way to do that. So it just depends on where my hand lies. So next we're gonna focus on accuracy. So you want to be able to play clean, clear, and precise, like I always say, if you've been here for any length of time, you've heard me say that at least twice, at least three times already, I'm sure, in one lesson. But clean, clear, and precise, so making sure your thumb is attacking the correct note or the correct string. So the way to do that is just get the whole posture, get the whole movement down. So I guess there's a big debate in the bass community as far as which way to play or which technique to use, the over or the under. So you see the difference, the over or the under. So I usually notice that technique being used with a lot of rock players, metal players, when they play that slap style, they'll use that technique, but all the other players use that under technique when your hand or your thumb is placed over the string and pointing upwards, or not even really upwards, but diagonally upwards across the string, and the other way is down the string. Okay, so now, what do I prefer? So I personally think, and this is just me, that the over technique causes you to be less accurate. Like I said, that's just me. I prefer the under technique where the thumb is pointing upwards. It actually allows you to hit the string a little bit easier, but I would suggest try both ways. Slapping through the string. It's hard for me to do it because I've never played it that way, but try it both ways to see which way is more comfortable for you. But the under technique do the same thing with each string. A, D, G. Also, which is very important, I wanted to mention the actual movement of this technique. It's not your thumb, it's not your wrist, it's not your hand, it's your forearm twisting. A lot of people use the analogy as, as holding or twisting a doorknob. I don't necessarily like that analogy because it's not really a natural movement when you're doing that and playing the bass. So I would think of just thumbs up, thumbs down, but straight, but halfway, <laughs> right? Thumbs up. And then if you're going to do thumbs down, don't go all the way down, just go halfway. So thumbs up, thumbs halfway, <laughs> that makes sense, right? That's the movement that you want. So the rotation at the forearm of the elbow, and that's the movement that you wanna make. If you wanna practice it just on a solid surface or a table, you can do the same thing and just bring it to the base. It's a very, very simple movement that's easy to get lost and easy to get confused by, but if you learn that motion, you'll be able to get it. So both of those techniques that we just mentioned actually land under the umbrella of accuracy and positioning, which I wanna talk about next. So if you wanna add that technique to the position, 
that's where your hand needs to lie. If you're doing that over technique, that's the way to do it. The under technique is the same way. You see the difference between the two. And my hand or my arm or my elbow is kind of running straight parallel to the fretboard when I'm doing that under technique. So you wanna pay attention close to that. So the other reason why I didn't wanna forget this or not to mention, the other reason why I prefer the under technique is because eventually I, a lot of people, I've been teaching for a long time and a lot of people are very curious about the double thumb technique. That's where you're going down through the string and up against the string. And trying to do that with the over technique is almost nearly impossible. So that's why I prefer the under technique more than the other because I also like to play double thumb technique a lot. If you guys saw in the beginning, I love to do that all the time and I switch back and forth from it. So just having that one position actually helps me a lot. And that motion, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but that motion is more an elbow joint motion too, just going up and down, not your wrist, not your thumb. It happens here at the pivot of your elbow going up and down. So if you notice, a lot of these slap techniques happen right here. So the rotation of the forearm at the elbow joint and the pivot here at the same spot. But we'll talk about the double thumb technique at a later date. And if you guys wanna take a look at who uses that one main common goat of them all is Victor Wooten. He uses this technique and is the master of it. So take a look at that, or you can go watch some tutorials on the double thumb technique that I specifically laid out how to do that in other tutorials. Just search the channel. I'll put a card here or something. You'll be able to find it and follow along. But anyway, so those are three major things you will need to know before attempting to play slap bass. And if you're interested in learning and becoming a pro at it, we have slap bass courses from beginner to advanced at Bass Nation Academy. If I didn't introduce myself, I'm Derek Bennett from Bass Nation Academy. If you didn't know that already, we have tons of tutorials, courses, uh, live stream classes, uh, personal feedback from me. We have a ton of stuff. Go check it out, I'll put the link in the description. If you're looking to enhance your bass playing, your slap bass or any bass playing at that, any category, I want you to go check that out after this video. One last thing I wanted to mention. I try to encourage all of my students to slap through the string. That way when you're ready to come up and do the double thumb technique, you're already halfway there. Okay, so slap through the string, each string, just let it ring. D, G. And you want to stop the note with this hand. And just press your fingers, place your fingers down on the fretboard or on top of the strings very lightly. And remember it's thumbs up, thumbs halfway. Very simple exercise. The next exercise that I want to do, it may seem simple, may seem easy, but it takes that much to get a clean, clear, and precise slap bass routine or technique. So we're gonna play the key G. We're gonna play the, the key. We're gonna play the note G on the third fret E string. We're gonna slap that and we're gonna stop the string from ringing or we're gonna stop that note. We're gonna choke it off, okay? So all it is is lifting up off of the string but keeping your hand placed on the string very, very lightly. So pressing the string down, let's slap through, thumbs up, thumbs halfway. And then when we're ready to lift off the string, we're lifting up, but not all the way off. So I want you to do G, C, F, and B flat all the way down this one fret. So G, lift up, C, lift up, F, lift up, B flat, lift up. Okay, so going through the string, through the string, through the string, lifting up here, that's using two different techniques, a muting or muffling technique, and also executing the slap bass technique. Also, if you notice, we did not do any popping with our with our right hand or with our slapping hand. We don't we didn't do any of that because I want to execute this technique first before we go any further. And I always say, take it slow. You have to, in order to get good and faster at something, you have to go slow first. And I always say in order to get better or faster at something, you have to take it slow at first. It may seem like a simple concept, but it really is that simple. So slow down, take it piece by piece, technique by technique, and make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. You should have done that already in the beginning of this video. Uh, anyway, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.